Okay, I am live. I am live, I think. So uh, I hope hope we're all well. If you're tuning into the video, if you're tuning in live or if you're watching this back later, uh, awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Please drop a comment and let me know that you can you can hear me. Let me know if you're if you're watching the replay or if you're watching live. And here's what we are going to um be diving into today. So uh, in a simple sense, we're gonna cover a lot of the strategies that you need to implement mostly in your training. We'll do a lot of talk about exercise and stuff for specifically toning and defining your body, right? And the reason that we're talking about this is <clears throat> I, I take on a lot of clients through my rebirth program every month, have done for the past year or so, been working with a lot of clients one to one, online and person. And one of the biggest frustrations I see in new clients who have tried to achieve these results before is, you know, they'll go on an exercise program, they they, they have success losing weight, so they see some sort of progress, momentum, dropping weight on the scales, but never, never managing to actually get the, the body, the physique, the definition, the look that they want, right? Not really improving or liking how they look in the mirror. And I see that quite a lot. And some of the, the mistakes that, some of the lads make um they're quite common you know I, I pick up on a lot of similarities so i'm going to talk about some of those mistakes that people make with their their exercise strategies or lack of strategies and um if we have time we'll cover some of the nutrition stuff as well they're both important but today we've got quite a lot to talk about and and some real value to give you and help you improve your exercise routine so that you actually start seeing results. So I'm going to I'm going to talk about a lot of things that you can take and just start implementing uh, immediately to see um, better results for your body. All right. So here's some of the things that that I see that, that don't work and some of the things that are mistakes. And I don't like to I don't like to demonize any form of any specific exercise or exercise system. But if you're looking to get a specific result, right, you're looking to get more toning in your body, more definition you need to look better, actually see the shape and outline of your, your muscles and stuff, then you have to train in a certain way. And some of the, the exercise systems that are becoming quite popular or have been quite popular over the, the past bunch of years, especially for you guys that train at home, the dads that are really busy and don't have access to gym equipment. You know, a lot of these things can appeal to you, you know, like the, the, the kind of hip workouts that you do in your room, follow along videos, um, just tons of body weight exercise type stuff, uh, what else, uh, circuit type training, those kind of things, right? And those are great because they get you moving more, they get you more active, they, they, they will improve your fitness levels to a certain extent. But they, there's only so far that they can take you and they won't really get you really great results in, in terms of toning up, getting really good definition and, and looking, in, looking in good shape. That's got to take a completely different strategy uh, entirely. And um, the reason this doesn't work, I'll dive into it in a second, but the important thing is that you have to start training in a way to build muscle, right? And now you don't need access to full gym equipment to do this. Obviously, that is optimal if you have the time to go to a gym and access to that equipment, but you don't need it. You can do it with minimal equipment at home. I'm going to cover some of the things that you, if if you're serious about getting great results for your body, for you to start with and building your own kind of home setup, I'll, I'll give you a list of those. But the reason that <clears throat> training a way to build muscle and make yourself stronger is so important is one, when you have more muscle, you burn more calories at rest, right? And one of the, the important aspects of losing body fat, one of the, uh, the key essential things of losing body fat and staying, getting leaner and staying leaner is, you know, spending more calories. So if, if you have more muscle, you, you're just burning more calories at rest, right? So, you know, just, just sitting, sitting, talking, because muscle is more expensive than body fat to maintain. If energy is the currency inside the body, then muscle is going to use a lot more of that, that currency, right? So more of the food that you're taking in is actually getting utilized just to support the muscle mass that you have. And in the process of actually building, training hard, and having to repair that muscle to, to, to make it grow and stuff, that uses a lot of calories as well, not just during the, the time of the exercise, the hour that you do a workout, but also for days afterwards in the recovery process, you're using a lot of calories to 
rebuild your your muscular system and even grow more than, than you had before. Whereas if you are doing cardiovascular type workouts, and I would I would count even the, the kind of body weight circuit stuff as cardiovascular to a certain degree, because there's almost so much damage that can create. Um, and the short term can be great, but long term, not so great. There's almost so much damage to a muscle that I can create and force you to, to recover. So you're, you're doing a, a large bulk of the calorie burning during the time of exercise and not so much later on. And, and if it's not contributing to, you know, larger um, larger muscle mass than you know, in the long term, then we're kind of missing out on a lot of that. Another important thing is as we age, we are we are naturally losing muscle, right? So because of that, it's, it's going to be easier to gain body fat. We tend to wither away a little, get a little, uh, have less muscle mass, and we, we store body fat a lot easier as we age, right? So if we train the way that builds muscle, we, we actually slow down the aging process and we age better. We essentially keep ourselves younger for longer, and, and we, we find it a lot easier staying leaner as we age as well. Right, super important. And there's really there's really strong links now. A lot of the research shows that um, higher levels of muscle mass also contributes to a stronger immune system. So as we age, immun immunity gets a little bit lower and there's some co correlations there to um, the, the levels of muscle mass dropping. So that's something that's really, really important as well. And here's something key, uh, key point to note. This doesn't mean that you have to bulk up and, and start looking like a bodybuilder. And, that, and listen, lifting heavy weights and training like that weight isn't necessarily going to bulk you up and make you look like a bodybuilder and somebody that's just really, really buff, right? That is extremely hard to do, and that takes a lot of your life dedication to, to achieve that. You, know, you probably had to start like 10 years ago. You know, if you're in your 30s and 40s and getting close to 50s or whatever, and you're, you're watching this now, and you hadn't started weight training and stuff 10 years ago and being consistent, well, if you have, you probably wouldn't be listening to follow my stuff, then um, you're probably not going to get that weight ever, right? That's that's reality. I mean, you can get in great neck, but you're probably not going to be massive. Heavyweights don't necessarily make you massive, right? I've been training since 2012, and I am tiny, right? I'm, just, I'm really strong. I'm fit. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm lean, but I'm, I'm not like... <laughs> If I walk past you in the street with a hoodie on, you wouldn't be like, oh, I can tell he I can tell he lifts weights. I don't, I don't really look like it. Um, you have to eat big and specifically for, for those kind of results for a long, long time. This will just make you a lot healthier and get you in greater neck. So look, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some strategies to to achieve these kind of results. Uh, what equipment you'll need for training at home, how to implement, um, how many times to train, strategies for like what to include in your workouts sets, reps, and all those kind of things. We'll, we'll talk about that in a wee second, but just one more on the, the kind of interval type stuff. That, that's okay. The cardio stuff's good. The hit stuff's all right. But most of your training should predominantly be uh, taken up by the type of exercise that's related to the result that you want. So let's focus more on the strength building stuff. And um, the reason the hit stuff doesn't work so great or the, the kind of cardio circuit training stuff, the reason it doesn't work so great is <clears throat> when you're doing lots of exercise at once and you're training your cardiovascular system, your heart's pumping, your, your lungs are sucking in oxygen really hard, we're compromising the, the amount of force that we can output, right? And that's one of the key elements to building muscle and getting stronger, being able to produce a high amount of force. And we're essentially um, compromising the amount of force that we can do. So, when we take a, a strength training workout or a, a muscle building workout, for example, and and you're doing things like, let's say, a, a set of dumbbell bench press for three sets of eight reps with two minutes rest in between, you're going to be able to, um, on each of those sets, create a, a much higher, a much larger amount of force than what you can by doing lunges, squats, press-ups, jumping jacks, and all those kind of things like over the period of five to 10 minutes without stopping much and without getting a break because you're breathing at your ass too much. Plus it's compromising your, your exercise technique and your form, which is the most, the first most important thing. So let's dive into a couple of the, the strategies. Here's what you uh, need to know. So like I said, if you're training at home, which everybody is just now, but even like after the gyms go back, if you're still going to be training at home for convenience and time and stuff, most of the guys that I coach, 
training that kind of setup anyway. And we, we get great results in, you know, getting lean, building muscle and, and looking more defined. Some pieces of, piece of equipment are really going to be worth your while investing in. And I say investing because it's, it's not really much of an expense if this is something that you're going to get years and years and years and years of use out of. And it's, and it's going to, it's going to improve your, your your body, your confidence, and everything that comes along with that. So, I I don't think you can really beat a pair of adjustable dumbbells to, to start off with. And body weight training is is another great tool. But I just find like in the beginning stages, um, a lot of people aren't that great at some of the body weight exercises, even the basics like a press up. And uh, you know there'll, there'll be plenty of you listening, watching this video, thinking you know I can do press ups no more, but I've come across hundreds of guys who have felt quite confident they can do plenty of press ups, and then when I fix their form and I get them to slow it right down uh, and and really think about what they're doing, creating full body muscular tension, and all that kind of stuff. You know, they can't do ten, right? And that's that's most men that I've trained, and I've trained a lot of people since two thousand and twelve. Uh, so you know, let that sink in a little. Uh, and the the body weight stuff is definitely a useful tool. We want it in there, but it's like a work in progress building up really good strength and control and form with the basics and some free weights like a pair of adjustable dumbbells that don't take up a lot of space in your house can really help us build some strength where we don't need to control the whole body especially if you've got a bit of weight to lose uh, obviously it makes body weight exercises like press ups and pull ups and stuff like that a lot harder to achieve so a pair of adjustable dumbbells and ideally a bench to, to do some bench press on and, and, and use for other reasons split squats and stuff like that um, if you have the space, but if you don't have a bench, the space to set up a bench anywhere, then that's fine. You know, you can do dumbbell training, standing, kneeling, and all that kind of stuff. So um, a pull-up bar is another great investment. You can get them pretty cheap, and you don't have to be able to do pull-ups to start training on the pull-up bar and training the, the muscle groups uh, and in correlation to those. One of the things that I start off all the lads doing is just, just hanging hanging from the bar, active hangs, so that the, the lats and the, the muscles that are all leaning into the shoulder, the arms, the grip and stuff like that are all working and they're getting some strengthening. Um, building up strength with this, those until you can hang for at least 60 seconds, which takes a bit of a while, takes a bit of time and, and practicing consistency for, for a lot of lads, again, especially if you've got weight to lose. So um, getting plenty of hangs in. And once you can hang for 60 seconds, you know, you're probably ready to start working on, working towards pull-ups. Then you can use like resistance bands to assist the pull-ups. You can do different types of hangs, flex hangs, where you jump up and grab onto the bar like this and just hold on to so your training, like the top part of the pull-up. And then working towards that, that that's going to help develop all your, your back muscles and your arms and stuff like that as well. A uh, suspension trainer is another thing that's really, really handy. You can pick them up for like 30 bucks or if you want to spend good money on it, buy a TRX for about 100 bucks, 120. Uh, tons of stuff that you can do on those um, at any stage. You know, you can make the body weight rows and stuff like that a lot easier. You can do like bicep curls, tricep extensions on them, You're using your body weight resistance and a whole load of other stuff. Like once you get really good at press-ups, you can do press-ups on the, sus the suspension trainer as the, the kind of balance element in, and a lot more tension on the, the pec muscles and stuff. And it just makes it a hell of a lot harder. So that's a great investment and it doesn't take up hardly any space. You, know, you can store that away and nobody even knows it's there. Um, and then the last thing, those are pretty much it. But the last thing I would say is a weighted vest. A weighted vest can be really, really great um, because if you've got a pair of adjustable dumbbells, you, know, you can make a lot of progress with them on your lower body movements like lunges and dumbbell deadlift variations and stuff like that. But And the goblet squat's holding a dumbbell in the goblet squat position. But essentially, your lower body is an area that gets quite strong, quite fast. And when your form's nailed down and you're, you're, you're progressing with the, the dumbbells that you have, you're going to need a little bit more weight. And that's probably, that might even be six months down the line or something like that. So a weighted vest, adding on to that, and included, including that with your dumbbells, can just give you so much more room for, for more progress and, and continue to, to get stronger with your workout. So that's a great thing. And it also makes your body weight exercises a hell of a lot more challenging. So once you've mastered press-ups and pull-ups and you can do lots of them, you know, adding a weighted vest to that makes a huge difference. One of the, the best weighted vests that I've come across um, come from Bulldog Gear. 
Uh, I really like those because most of the weighted vests you can buy are just like the one weight, 15 kilo or 20 kilo, and you can't really adjust that. Bulldog Gear have a good one that comes in two kilo increment blocks, so you can take them out of the vest and add them in. Start with two kilos and build them up for, for different types of exercises, so lots of room for, for progress with those. Okay, so the next thing you need is a, you need a strategy, right? Another mistake a lot of guys make is just getting through workouts. You know, and a workout isn't something that's just to to get through, or you should be lying on a puddle, of, lying on the floor in a puddle of sweat, breathing out your ass at the, the end of it. There should be a goal for for each workout, for each workout phase, and specifically for these kind of results, you want to really be aiming to increase your strength and performance. And that's going to look different for everyone, like how often you train, what your schedule looks like, and, and the exercises you have in there. So I'm going to give you some ideas and help you find a starting place that's going to be right for you. So the first thing is uh, maybe sound pretty obvious, but a lot of people make a mistake here. Um, pick what's practical for you in terms of how many days you're going to train, right? Now, for the strength and muscle building type stuff, ideally, if you're just starting out, you can, you can do fine on two days a week and, and make progress there. Two, two full body workouts a week. You know, I'll give you an example of what a full body workout might look like in a second. But anything from two to four days a week is going to be optimal, right? And as you've been, if, if once you've been consistent for a while and you've been progressing in strength, and eventually you're going to need a bit more overall volume in a week. And that's when you want to kind of increase it to three workouts to four workouts. I think three is a great starting place if you can make the time for that. And of course, I'm not saying don't do cardio stuff. If, if you do enjoy cardio, do, do whatever you enjoy doing, right? Whether that's running, rowing, cycling, you'll know, get out and just do that stuff on the days in between, the days that you're not doing your, your specific strength workouts. So a lot, of, a lot of people make the mistake there by, um, especially you guys who struggle with consistency long term, you know, over periods of years, just being consistent with training your body. That's one of the main things. And they go through a period of being on, on the wagon, off the wagon, you know, just falling on and off all the time and struggling with motivation and stuff like that. A big mistake is really when when you get the, the fitness bug, <clears throat> you know, diving into too much too soon just because you're feeling fired up for it. I see it all the time where, where, where lads maybe start training four or five times a week and they've just came from, you know, a period, whether it's two months, three months, whether it's a year or so, doing nothing and just because they're excited enthusiastic and stuff and, and ready ready to get after it <clears throat> they'll start training four or five times a week in reality that's just too much volume it's too much for your body to recover from and your body can only recover from so much exercise in a week right and um that can increase that you can improve how much exercise your body can recover from but you have to build that up slowly for example, if you have a, a goal of being able to do a handstand press up, and at the moment you're not really that good with normal press ups, you're not going to start with doing handstand press ups, right? Because you physically can't do it. So that's something that you have to build up the competency, the strength, the the years of reps, and then work towards that. The difference being with with workouts and fitness, you know, you have the ability to do more. But it doesn't always mean that you you should, because it's it's not always a smart idea, and that's why a lot of people get burned out pretty quick, and they just feel like they run out of motivation. In reality, they've just burned themselves out, right? Cash and checks, uh, minds cash and checks at the body, or writing checks the body can't cash. You just cannot um, recover from that amount of workouts too quickly. So take the right strategy. Choose a number of days that are going to be realistic for you. Ask yourself, like, what can I commit to for a long period of time? What am I, like, at least 9 out of 10 confident that I can commit to for a long period of time? And go with that, right, even if it's two days. And then eventually, you know, once I see your new normal, add in a third day, a couple months down the line. If you get to six months and you're still going and you feel like, you know, you could do some more or you need some more, great. Add in a fourth day, you know, especially if you start to plateau and you're not seeing progress anymore. And that's how to build it up. So... What those, uh, what those workout routines might look like, if you're training two to three times a week, I would definitely say start with full body. 
And that's just going to allow you to practice certain movement patterns and get really efficient at those movement patterns before you start really increasing the weights and, and loading up on them. <clears throat> and you can, you can, you could, in the beginning stage, you could repeat like the same workout for a month or two, two or three times a week and make tons of great progress and get really efficient at the, the technique because strength training is, it, Initially, it's, it's neurological, right? The, for, for something like the first 30% of your strength increases are all going to be neurological adaption. What do I mean by that? Um, kind of like learning any new skill, like learning to ride a bike. You know, initially, it's really difficult. You're super hyper aware, conscious of, you know, holding the steering wheel, what's, what's ahead of you, what's around you, try to get your balance right, and we fall off and mess it up quite a lot of the time. But with lots and lots and lots of practice every day, you know, if you try to ride a learn to ride a bike and you only done, done it once a week, you you know, you wouldn't get it that quickly. It would take a long time. But if you do it every single day, then you pick it up a lot faster. And eventually, you know, you can go months without riding a bike and jump on one and not have any problems, right? Because your body's got a good, decent um, level of muscle memory, so to speak. Strength training is quite the same. So we can do the same movement patterns, the same workout multiple times a week for the first month or two, make tons of good progress on that, get strong and, and start developing some, some muscle definition and things. Um, so I would keep it simple and go with full body workouts. And that might look like, let's go something something like two exercises for lower body. So you may have some sort of uh, some sort of hip, hip hinge. You either do it like a hip thrust, a single leg hip thrust, or if you're using dumbbells and some sort of dumbbell deadlift variation, or single leg dumbbell variation, any of that works. And you also want to do a squat pattern. So whether that's a single leg or, um, you know, squat with two feet, two feet in the floor, dumbbell goblet squat, or it may just be a bodyweight squat. If you're completely new in your form and your mobility isn't that great just yet. Um, for upper body, probably want a little bit more variation. So you want a <clears throat> horizontal push this way so that might be like a, a press up or a, a dumbbell bench press or a dumbbell floor press if you don't have a bench and then you want a horizontal row sorry making sure you can see my arm there a horizontal row where you're pulling that way and working the the muscles all involved with that pulling pattern so that might be something like a, a one arm dumbbell row or an, a, an inverted row on the suspension trainer like, like I said, that's why one of the, one of those things are really, really important, really valuable. Um, then we want a, a vertical push and pull. So overhead and then pulling down the way. So that might look like um, a hang on the, on the pull-up bar. So we're training the muscles uh, in relation to that, the, the lats, the bicep, the grip, muscles in the, uh, the upper back. Uh, or it might be something as simple as a, a resistance band pull down right if i'm not quite ready for working on hangs and working towards pull-ups just yet and then overhead we're talking uh, a dumbbell uh, i like a single arm dumbbell standing military press because we tend to get a lot more range i find a lot of uh, people who are new to strength work especially especially older get not older sorry guys in their 30s 40s that haven't been doing much physical activity for a while we tend to you know develop that kind of quite common in today's society people just been developing that rounded shoulder like this um always on the phones always driving behind a, an office chair or whatever so we get really stiff upper back and poor mobility in the, the thoracic spine so i think two hands pressing at one time really challenges that and can sometimes be an issue put and ends up putting a lot of pressure on the, the lower back whereas one one arm we tend to get a lot more mobility and range with that without any without as much problems in the, the lower back so and then you might want to fling in some some ab work in there so something like a side plank or a normal a normal straight arm plank because that can contribute to improving your, your press up strength and that's really it that's really it that's what a, a full body workout would look like or if if you eventually progress to doing three to four workouts a week then an upper body lower body split can also be really really great right because that's going to help you get a lot more volume in maybe recover a little bit as you get stronger say six or twelve months down the line you're pushing a lot more so your body does need a little bit more recovery time so rather than training the same body parts <clears throat> three times a week 
you know, you, you change it to an upper body, low body split, where obviously Monday you might train upper body, Wednesday you might train lower body and so on. That just gives you those muscle groups a lot longer to, to recover from workout to workout. Oh, that makes sense. I'm going to move on to the next part here. Let me grab it. Quick drink. So part of your strategy has to be really aiming to increase your strength and performance over a long period of time. Right, and this is where I think the the fitness industry may create a lot of problems because with a lot of companies or coaches and stuff, you'll find that tend to sell short programs to get people in, you know, eight week transformations, 12 week transformations and, and so on and so on. And ultimately that's because a lot of people have commitment issues. And we we see these, these excuse me, these workout programs that are available selling 12 week body transformations and all that kind of thing. So sometimes that can, that can lead us to believe that I'm going to be an awesome neck in 12 weeks. And yes, you know, if you follow a program, you, you can have great results. If you're consistent and you're dedicated in 12 weeks time, great results in the sense that much more improved from where you're at now. I think a lot of people tend to <clears throat> be very short-sighted with um, their, their expectations and hope to see, you know, some sort of drastic transformation in that short period of time. But it's important to think uh, over a longer period of time, right? Keep your mind in the long game. And have a strategy where you're looking to improve your strength and performance long term. So you're picking a few key exercises, right? And you want to look at where you're at with those now and gradually work towards lifting a little bit heavier, doing some more reps, just being able to do it better six months, 12 months, 18 months down the line. For example, let's take a simple exercise like the, the dumbbell bench press or the dumbbell floor press, which, whichever variations you're using. Let's say you can you can bench the 15 kilo dumbbells for 10 reps, right? And about six months time from now, you want to be doing the, maybe working towards the 25. Now that's not set in stone. That's not saying that you should be doing that. That's me just saying you, you want to be, it'll have at least move closer to that and certainly be benching more, right? And the same goes for like a press up, right? If, once you get really good at press ups, let's say you can do ten of those with really great form. Okay, then let's let's work towards getting thirty of those. And one, once you're at that point, right, it's probably time to invest in that weighted vest that I've been talking about and, and add that, add some weight to that, and be able to build that up. And that's taking a lot of time, right? But as a result of all of the workouts and all of the sets and all of the reps that you have done with these exercises over that longer period of time. Your body's going to have to have adapted so much that you will have more muscle mass on your body as a as a product of that commitment that you've made to yourself and, and your training over that time frame. Your body's not going to have a choice. It's going to be forced to adapt to that and you're going to be in much better shape for it. Yeah, rather than just getting through these uh, grind of our workouts in you know, six weeks or 12 weeks or whatever it is. Yeah, so strategy is definitely key and having that, um, that long-term aim and, and mind for all of your all of your exercises that you're going to be doing and your and your workout routines. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about rep ranges. So the rep ranges are are important because this is essentially going to determine the the amount of weight, the amount of intensity of effort that we can put in to to a given workout. Generally speaking. For your upper body, we want to be aiming for repetitions anywhere between five and 12 reps, right? And that's just going to be a nice sweet spot for you to accumulate a, a lot of volume. What do you mean by volume? Now, this is where it might get a little bit complicated, but I'm going to keep it as simple as I can and unsciencey as I can, just so that you can under, understand it and put some of it into action. So volume is like the total amount of sets per muscle group that you do in a week. Now, we can get really anal about it and calculate um, sets times repetition times load. Load is basically the weight lifted, right? So if you lifted the 15 dumbbells on a bench press and did three sets of 10 reps 
I'm not even going to try and calculate that in my head, even though it's a, a really simple calculation. Numbers are not my strong point without a calculator. But a really simple way to keep track of your total weekly volume is just how many sets you do per muscle group per week, right? And the rep ranges for those sets are quite important because they're going to they're going to allow you to to get a sufficient enough amount of volume in and your um, with the weights that you're lifting. But if we compare this to, let's say, a, a circuit training exercise where you're just doing mostly body weight stuff or these kind of popular hit workouts, and a lot of them, by the way, aren't really true hit. They're, they're just they're just being kind of branded as hit because it sounds sexy, but if you're doing lots of body weight exercises, you know the the volume that you can accumulate on that is quite limited, just because you know you're just you're just training body weight, and you, you can't over a period of weeks and months you know increase that unless you're getting fatter and increasing your body weight, right? In fact, if if you're losing weight, you're getting your you're losing weight. So the loads you're lifting on those exercises are are kind of getting less and less. So you're giving your body less reason to to adapt. But if you're keeping keeping track of the amount of sets that you do every single week and the uh, the load that you're lifting on those sets, gradually the amount of volume that you're doing over weeks and months is increasing. Hope that makes sense. So that's why it's a really good strategy. And here's another important thing: tracking that volume, not just tracking the volume, but also tracking your the the weights you're lifting, the reps you're doing on a given exercise from week to week. So like, with, and this is one, this is one, this is something that will probably transform your workouts in itself. So when you come to repeat a workout this week, say that you did last week, you can look over your notes what you did last week, and you're right. Okay, I've got um, I've got press ups for three sets of fifteen. I've got dumbbell shoulder press for three sets of twelve on each arm. And you can you can look at the weights you lifted, uh, or what what your what your scores were on that previous workout, and you know this workout in front of you, excuse me, that you have to aim to either lift a little bit heavier weight, or do more repetitions, or if you've took some notes to say that well, listen, my form is quite was quite bad on the last few reps on that that exercise, the last workout, then maybe you don't add more weight or try and do more reps. Maybe you just try and really perfect your form on every single repetition. And that's progress itself. That's always going to be the, the first step of progress for any any new exercise or any exercise you're, you're finding a real challenge. And just having that habit in itself of tracking these things and having the notes is going to like, that's going to drastically increase the amount of progress and the results that you get for your body week in, week out. The amount, the amount of people that I come across who don't do this they're just kind of relying on memory and a lot of time just winging the workouts, right? That's that's why no progress is happening. There's there's no strategy, there's no aim, short term or long term, and there's no tracking, right? So you're just kind of relying on memory, um, which you know it's just leading to kind of spinning your wheels. There's no progress happening whatsoever. So that's something I highly recommend that you start. Uh, applying into your workouts just now, something that's massively easily applicable for you and it can make a, a massive, massive difference. And um rest periods, right? Rest periods are super, super important as well. One of the one of the biggest issues I come across with a lot of men in relation to workouts is a lot of people get quite addicted or they have some sort of strange relationship to the the feeling of just kind of breathing out their ass and working really hard and uh, feeling like a workout's just done them in. And sometimes that can be a, a, a struggle when I'm trying to get someone to, to tr change their their training strategy and how they go about working out, especially when it comes to, you know, focusing on just more muscle building stuff, more strength building stuff, because that that's going to take working hard on, on a set, let's say a set of squats, dumbbell goblet squats for 15 reps, and then stopping and resting for, two to three minutes and doing nothing. You know, a lot, a lot of lads feel like, you know, they have to be constantly doing something for 40 minutes and just not stopping or 20 minutes or however, however long the, these usual kind of circuit training for long workouts are. And the difference is we're accumulating volume and encouraging your body to adapt and, and eventually, you know, grow muscle because of that. And that's where 
the, the toning, the muscle definition and stuff is going to come from. Of course, diet has a lot to um, contribute to this, but I'm not really talking about that end of it just now. I'm just trying to get help a lot of you lads fix your workout strategies in relation to this goal. Now, in order for you to continue from set to set on a given exercise to maintain the same load, if you don't want, if you if you if you're not taking sufficient rest periods in between those sets, the load that you can lift is going to massively drop off, and what that affects is uh, ultimately the the total volume that you can lift, right? So, for lower body exercises, ones that are really really difficult, deadlift variations, squat variations, you're, you're going to rest anywhere between two and um, three minutes, right? Ideally, three minutes between a set. Now, if you're the kind of person who feels like you just cannot rest for three minutes, for some reason you feel like you're, you're not burning calories or you're not doing enough, use that use that three minutes to to work on some poor mobility, some poor flexibility things. You're stretching, so you're being productive between sets, and then you can get a lot of stuff done, but not something that you're outputting a lot of effort and intensity into, because that's going to that's going to inhibit the load that you can lift and, and um, essentially the overall volume you you lift during that workout and in a week. Hope that makes sense. Uh, okay. What we're going next? Intensity of effort, right? Now, the intensity of effort is really, really important. And this is going to apply to every exercise that you, every exercise, every set, and every workout. You don't have to be finishing your workout feeling like you've just absolutely wiped out. That's not the purpose of a workout. That's not the purpose of any exercise or any individual set of an exercise. The The purpose is to stimulate, not annihilate, right? It's, it's training. You're training your body to improve. You're trying to improve yourself. All we're trying to do here is encourage your body to go, to go away and adapt and recover from a new training stimulus right? If you're training too hard all the time and you're taking your your sets, your workouts, your weeks to 10 out of 10 effort, you're not going to recover from that and you won't get the results from that. Here's something that we need to remember. Exercise is a stressor. I, sorry. Exercise is a stressor, albeit a good stress and plenty of people need more of that kind of stress in their life because it encourages you to go away and recover and come back stronger. But it's still a stress, right? And everything in life that's that's adding some stress to the cup of life is going to accumulate. And if that cup overflows, then you you fail to recover. Let that sink in a little bit. I've I've seen I've seen plenty of people get fantastic results on two workouts a week, like literally change their entire body, their their health, and their life on training twice a week. Plenty of people, and that's because they've had. All these things in place that I've been talking about, the long-term strategy, the consistency, gradually accumulating volume, and the recovery has been spot on. All right, so we'll have to look at that recovery as a workout as a whole. I like to I like to finish my whole workout feeling like, you know, I've got a little bit left in me, and I'm quite excited for the next workout. If I, if I finish a workout and, I, and I'm wiped out and I'm like, oh, man, glad that's over. You know, I'm not really looking forward to the next workout and I'm probably pushing I'm probably pushing myself a little bit too hard, right? And to accomplish that, we need to look at each individual exercise and each individual set. So when you finish a set, whether that's a, a set of 10 reps on a, a press-up, a set of 10 reps on a dumbbell bench press, a set of 20 reps on a, a dumbbell goblet squat. We want to leave a little bit of room in the tank, right? We're not taking that to like balls to the wall, 10 out of 10 effort. Finish your sets on it somewhere around an 8 out of 10, right? And that's going to change from week to week, workout to workout, depending on how you're feeling. Maybe sometimes you, you get a really crap sleep or you're just not feeling too great, you know, and you, you, if you're pushing yourself on those days, to that eight or nine out of ten, you know, you could you could end up having a really bad week because you're going to struggle to recover from that. So it's important to be able to tell how you're feeling on a given day as well. 
uh, energy wise. And the days that you're feeling crap, you know, just go for a six out of ten. Even if that means you need to regress a little in comparison to the workouts you did the, the week previous. You're still training and maybe you're just working on your, your technique and your form. And the other days you're feeling good. All right, push up to an eight or a nine out of ten tops, right? No more than a nine on every exercise, on every set. Not pushing it to a ten out of ten. Because you're just not going to be able to sustain that. And if and if you if you're successful implementing that strategy with every workout, you're going to feel a hell of a lot better. You're going to get better results. You're going to be so much more consistent with your training because you're going to enjoy it, right? And you're going to feel yourself getting stronger. Okay, right. Last thing. Last thing is really just about tracking. I actually, I actually covered this um, maybe five minutes ago. But track your workouts, track your sets, track your reps, and track your numbers. And if this is this is one of the main things you take away from this workout, that's why I want to touch on it last. You know, you can you can implement this from today. Grab yourself a notebook, go onto Amazon. You can find your know, workout trackers and things like that. Um, inside our app and in in our training programs, the guys get to do all of this. You know, they track every single exercise, what they lifted. So you sit down at a workout. Or you don't sit down at a workout. When you come to a workout that you've repeated before, okay, you look over your notes. What did I hit on this last week? How many sets of this exercise? How many reps? Okay, this week I know I'm trying to get 11 reps on my bench press because last week I got 10. And maybe you get to that 11 reps and you feel like I'm only at a 7 out of 10 effort. So maybe I push for 12. Maybe I push for 13. But having those notes will always let you know um, what your targets are, are going to be, and that's going to help you progress. And another thing you can track on from day to day is your, your energy levels and your mood, because that's going to be super important for your ability to progress on a given workout. You know, if, if, you're, if your energy levels are like a 5 or a 6 out of 10, it's not a good idea for you to be pushing hard in a workout, because you're, you're going you're gonna to crash and burn. Right? And if you do push hard, then you might have a terrible week ahead of, ahead of you next next bunch of days okay so there it is i've covered a lot of training strategies i was going to cover some stuff on nutrition but we'll do it a different day because this has went 42 minutes and uh i've got a call some of the clients so hope you found some value in this if you if you did if you have any follow-up questions please drop them in the comments or feel free to shoot me a pm and i will get back to you asap but i hope you enjoyed it and if you do need any more help two things for you one if you haven't already, visit the website, deanmcmenamin.co.uk. If you opt your email into the one of the boxes in there, I will send you a free guide on nutrition, how to get your portion sizes right, protein, uh, healthy fats, carbohydrates, um, how much fruit and vegetables and stuff you should be aiming to get, and how to portion them out, how to get your portion sizes correct. A starting place for you to help you start losing fat toning your body up and complement the hard work and the training that you're doing so you actually get results from it. Uh, number two, if you need some more professional help with this stuff and, and essentially help you get faster results with my guidance, the 28-Day the Rebirth Program will be coming up uh, soon. We'll be opening the doors for that at the end of this month. I think it's the beginning of April, maybe the 4th or the 5th, Sunday the 4th or the 5th of April, off the top of my head, is when the next one's going to start. If you need any information on that, again, just send me a PM. Let me know you're interested and we'll have a chat about it and see if it's the right place for you. Other than that, have a cracking week. Adios.